and welcome to the debrief from the business of fashion, where each week we go deep on our most popular BOF professional stories with the correspondents who created them. I'm Lauren Sherman. Just as they've relied on photographers, stylists, and graphic designers in the past, fashion brands are now turning to a new generation of digital creatives to shape and convey their images in the virtual world. Demand for expertise in 3D design, gaming, blockchain, and more is growing as more companies try to capitalize on the opportunities in spaces like gaming and Web3. Today, I'm joined by BOF technology correspondent and author of our weekly tech newsletter, Mark Bain, who recently profiled this new generation of image makers. Today in New York City, Mark also co-hosted our first ever technology-focused BOF professional summit, where we covered everything from how to work with TikTok talent to the strategic benefits for fashion businesses in linking physical products with the digital world. If you weren't able to be there in person, there's plenty to check out on businessoffashion.com, all of which is free with your BOF professional membership. Mark, thank you so much for being here with me. So you've closely covered the rising significance of what's happening in the metaverse and what it means to the broader fashion industry, but what made you want to spotlight some of the creative people making the things that live in this virtual world? It's a very niche sort of skill. And you hear about fashion brands like Gucci and Balenciaga doing all of these things in platforms like Roblox, which is a gaming platform, or Fortnite, or just creating like virtual experiences. And they have this amazing creativity, but a lot of times they don't have the technical skills in-house to actually build these things that they're trying to actually bring to life, these digital experiences. And so I was wondering, who do they find to do this? I've talked to some of these people for various stories over the past several months, and it kind of made sense to just look at them all together. These experiences can be pretty different too. NFTs and video games are entirely different mediums, but they can involve some of the same skills. One of the examples you had was this company Beyond Creative built an Adidas Oswego sneaker for Fortnite, the video game. Can you kind of walk us through exactly what they did and what kind of skills they needed to pull it off? Sure. So when you look at it, you probably think, all right, so Adidas has this like 3D file of their sneaker and they sent it to Beyond Creative and Beyond Creative can just sort of upload it to Fortnite. And that's actually not at all how it works. Beyond Creative had to build the sneaker within Fortnite using the tools that Fortnite provides to creators who want to build experiences and environments in its space. It's like really basic shapes, like circles and triangles and half circles and that sort of stuff. And so to actually create this sneaker took Beyond Creative about four days. They told me that something of this size and complexity, like a a shoe like this, because they've done other projects too, on average is about four to five days for any project like this. And then they spend, if I remember right, more than a month on the entire experience. It's very slow, kind of tedious work. What exactly happens? Does Fortnite have a tool that has like, these are all the shapes you can use in Fortnite. Here you go, Beyond Creative. And a designer at Beyond Creative sits there and like uses those tools to shape them to look like an Oswego sneaker. Is that essentially what happens? I haven't actually tried it myself. So this is all like secondhand descriptions. Fortnite is like this battle royale game, and not so long after they launched, they introduced this thing called creative mode, which is mostly like if people don't necessarily want to go in there and fight, they can build structures and that sort of stuff. And it's basically they gave creators like a bunch of tools to just build their own things, but it's video game tools. So if you look at the shapes, as I mentioned, they're very primitive and you have to kind of build these things up piece by piece from what it sounds like, almost like building a house. Like you have to create a foundation and make sure everything looks right. It's almost like sculpting, I guess, just digitally. A company like Adidas, Balenciaga has also worked with Beyond Creative. Beyond Creative was sort of responsible for building the store that they had in their Fortnite experience. They didn't do the entire experience for Balenciaga. But yeah, they'll work with them. They'll give them a bunch of images, tell them what they want it to look like. And then Beyond Creative, they go build it. Got it. So what are some examples of other cool things like this that you've seen fashion brands do or recruit people to do? 
Some of the big ones have been in video games. So others in Roblox have been like Gucci, the Gucci Garden. They partnered with some creators who are like specialized to a space. And Roblox is one of those where you have a lot of people who are like really skilled at building in Roblox. But Vans has built a space in Roblox. McLaren, the car company also. But brands are also doing things outside of video games, like launching these virtual experiences to showcase product launches, or if they have like a pop-up going, they might do a virtual sort of extension of it. Dior Beauty did that, for instance, in partnership with Harrods, and they worked with this company called Imperia that builds basically 3D spaces. Uh, and it was sort of modeled after their pop-ups and Imperia basically took a lot of the elements from the pop-ups. They looked at the colors used, some of the design details, and worked them into this space. But one of the interesting things about a digital experience is you don't have to stick to the real world. So then they also did stuff like this sort of virtual garden that you could walk into as well. Lots of gardens. <laughs> yeah, when, it's, when you're talking about Dior, there are lots of, of gardens. And I guess Gucci did a garden too. Actually, that's one of the challenges for like a high fashion brand when you're trying to come up with an interactive experience. For this thing to really work and to be good and engaging, it should be sort of like interactive. You kind of want to move around in it. And it can be hard to translate a brand image into some sort of interactive experience. Obviously, having a proficiency and expertise in a video game and how to build things within one of these video games helps. But what other skills, what other kinds of jobs are needed to be able to participate in this world building? So it sort of depends on the space and what you're, you're looking to do. Like if you want to create NFTs, for instance, you'd probably work with a company that knows how to actually mint NFTs, which is basically creating the NFT on the blockchain. It's something you can look up on like YouTube or something, but if you're a fashion company and there's a lot riding on this, there are a lot of mechanics involved. Uh, you want to do the drop right. And there's like a lot of technical stuff on that side that you would really like a partner to be able to handle and to do it smoothly. There are also things like obviously 3D design skills are a huge one. Pretty much any virtual space you're working in, there are going to be 3D design tools that you have to be kind of familiar with. And then there are other sorts of skills too that aren't even just about knowing the software or something. This one company, The Gang, they're based in Sweden. They worked with Vans to create the experience Vans built in Roblox. One of the things they think about a lot is gameplay. What is the actual gameplay we can come up with here? And one of the things that fashion companies look to these different agencies and studios for is sometimes advice on what do we actually need to do? What do we need to think about to bring our brand into the space? So there are a lot of specific skills that you need or that are in demand. Are there things that translate from the real world into this? Like if you're just generally a great graphic designer, can that be applied to this medium? What are some of the creative skills that people have probably amassed over the last 15 years that can be applied to this virtual stuff? I think there are skills that apply. For instance, just having an understanding of how to translate a brand into an image, it sounds like very basic, but that's still in a, a lot of ways what you're doing. You're just doing it in a 3D space. One of the things that's actually grown more in recent years is training in 3D design like for fashion, like fashion schools are teaching it more. Arguably, they're still a bit behind the curve on this, but programs like Clo 3D are becoming more popular and you are seeing, especially at like footwear brands, for instance, like designers are doing a lot more work in 3D. And it might not always be the exact same tools, but just having sort of that uh, familiarity with 3D design tools, I imagine, again, I, I'm not a 3D designer myself. You're not, but Mark? It, How can that be? <laughs> I think it gives you a, just more comfort with the concept of building a product in 3D. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of The Business of Fashion. When I first started writing BOF, it was out of pure passion for this industry and with an eye to how the disruptive forces of digitization, globalization, and consumer shifts would change the way fashion works. 15 years later, we are well on our way to helping to define the fashion business of the future. 
As I travel the world, some of you ask me, what's the best way to support BOF as we continue to act as your guide during these turbulent times? The best way to support BOF is to support our journalism by joining BOF Professional, the largest community of fashion professionals in the world. A BOF Professional membership gives you access to our agenda setting insights and analysis, which you won't find anywhere else. Plus the opportunity to learn from our talented team of correspondents and editors, as well as our wider network of the fashion industry's leading creatives, thinkers, and futurists. Follow the link in the episode notes to learn more. One thing that keeps coming up for me regarding this stuff is the projects you're talking about sound extremely cool. And we've talked offline about them and they sound amazing and makes you really excited about what's possible. But just reading your review from Metaverse Fashion Week and seeing some of it myself, a lot of the stuff looks really bad. It looks pretty crappy. Why is that? And do you see things as you've been observing this and covering this for the last couple of years? Have you seen improvement in terms of what's possible in the virtual world? There are a bunch of reasons that things might not look very good. One of the really big ones is just that if you're talking about an online experience that you're just streaming over a browser, you have to consider that your internet speed and your computer's processing power those are going to affect how the experience runs. And so if you do something that's extraordinarily detailed and looks really beautiful and is really graphically rich, it might just slow the thing down so much that the experience sucks and you know nobody wants that anyway. Also, it depends on like a case like Decentraland, which is where Metaverse Fashion Week happened. You do have those concerns about internet speed. One of the other things that they want is they want people building this world. The whole point of it is it's actually blockchain based and it's not like a central authority just building everything and putting it out there. They want creators building stuff too. And the easier it is to build stuff, the more people you're going to get to build. But to make building stuff easy, it usually has to look pretty simple. And so you get this trade off all the time between like how easy do you want it to be built? You know, how fast do you need it to run? And then like, what's it actually going to look like? And everyone is trying to balance these things all the time. Like when you play a, like a really great looking video game on a console, especially, you know, if you're actually putting like a disc into it, it's running locally. You're not just like streaming it on a browser so much. It's a very different sort of experience than just open a tab in Chrome and try to do one of these things. And sometimes they just don't work well. Even the ones that look really good, the experience can be bad because it's just slow. I bet 10 years from now, it's going to be incredible. And we'll look back on this and think, wow, that was funny that that's that's what it looked like. But I could see this becoming almost magical in terms of what is possible to create. I think that's what everyone is hoping for. In some ways, we've seen like a lot of great advances in certain things. Augmented reality is a really interesting one where you use it on your phone and like on Snap or something, or if you you download Gucci's app, they let you try on sneakers with it. And it's still a little glitchy and buggy here and there, but it's improving all the time. On the other hand, you still have worlds that are like Second Life, which came out more than a decade ago. And then some of the new stuff that's appeared, like the blockchain-based stuff, you look at it, you're like, that's not really that much better than Second Life or like Minecraft is another really sort of blocky world. So I think the expectation is that it's going to improve dramatically. I suspect, I'm sure it will, it might just be a little bit uneven at times. Some of these projects are very bespoke and for a very particular audience and only get a niche of people excited. But there are other ones that have really taken off. Is there a project that you think has been just super successful on a bunch of different elements in terms of the amount of people that have engaged with it, the way it looks, the just overall concept? Did anything really take off that you think, wow, that's a great example for the industry to sort of follow? I think the one that always stands out to me is the Vans World experience in Roblox. I haven't looked at the numbers just recently, but not too long ago when I checked, it had gotten more than 64 million visits. I think Vans was very smart. Roblox actually reached out to them because they knew that their audience had an interest in Vans. So they were targeting an audience that was interested in them. Also, they worked with the gang, as I mentioned, to build this experience. And the thing that's really great about it 
it looks good, but the look isn't like the most impressive thing to me. I think the gameplay is just really fun. If you ever played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater back in the day on like PlayStation or something, it's kind of similar to that, except it's like this big expansive world that's online. You can go like hang out with your friends there and skate around. And I think they just did a good job of making it a fun experience. I wrote about it at one point months ago. And even when I didn't have to work on it, I would sometimes just go play around in it just because they did a great job. It was really fun. I never did play Tony Hawk's, whatever it's called, Mark, unfortunately. But I do want to try this one. It sounds super fun. The thing that keeps coming up for me is how in demand these agencies must be. And there must just be tons of not only opportunity for these agencies, but also for people who want to get into this industry. Yes, you can do fashion projects, but these skills are applicable across industries, I'm sure. I assume that this is just like a really hot job market right now. I think it's definitely growing. It's getting interest. One of the things that is a little bit challenging is like if you're building in games specifically, like some of the agencies, as I mentioned, like they'll work specifically in Roblox and they won't work in Fortnite and vice versa. It can be a very specific skill set and it can be kind of a full time job to keep up with these platforms and to make sure you're providing the best experience to understand the gameplay. And also there's a community that already exists there. And that's one of the things that brands have to consider when they go into an existing space is like making sure what they're doing works for the community that's already there. You don't want to alienate people. <laughs> that's not going to help your brand at all. On the other hand, you're right. I mean, there are some skills that are transferable and you see people creating for different brands in different spaces. Like they might work for a car company one day and a fashion company the next to build them like a, a virtual experience to showcase one of their products. Also, NFTs have taken off and, you know, I'm sure everybody is looking at making NFTs however they can. So yeah, it sort of depends on the project and what your goals are. But a lot of the companies that I spoke to, they said that the interest has taken off in the past couple of years and especially the past couple of months. It's just continues to surge. Well, I will be following your coverage, Mark. Thank you again for joining me and congratulations on the event. I know it's been a crazy couple of weeks for you and it was great to be there and witness it. Thanks. Yeah, it's been really fun. We got an amazing lineup of speakers and I'm very happy with how things turned out. Amazing. Thanks again, Mark. And be sure to check out Mark's technology newsletter. It features revealing stories like this every week. You've been listening to The Debrief, produced and edited by Emma Clark, Kate Barton, and Eric Bria in the BOF studio. I'm Lauren Sherman, and I'll be back next Wednesday with a new episode. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can join BOF Professional today with an exclusive 25% discount on an annual membership covering key industry topics from sustainability to technology to marketing with access to our case studies, live events, and iOS app. To get this special offer and benefit from 25% off of a membership, head to the link in the episode show notes or enter the coupon code DEBRIEF at checkout. Visit businessoffashion.com slash memberships.